So now let's talk about the hunger hormones. So leptin is the satiety hormone. It's supposed to tell you when to stop eating. It's supposed to give your brain signals that you're full. And then ghrelin is the hunger hormone. So it'll make you feel like you're starving. It's the let's raid the pantry hormone. So the problem is that many people suffer from leptin resistance. So it means that their body is not listening to leptin anymore. So they don't know when to stop eating. So let's go over a case example. So Henry is a 35 year old man. He's about 30 pounds overweight. He's mostly sedentary at work. His diet is the standard American diet or the SAD diet, meaning he's eating fast foods, processed foods and sugary drinks. And he's starving all the time. He can't get enough food. So we check his blood work and his fasting insulin is 35, which is really high because ideal fasting insulin is six. His fasting glucose is also elevated because normal fasting glucose should be under 100. His hemoglobin A1C, which is a marker of his sugars over the last three months, is high at 6.1 because normal should be under 5.7. And then his liver enzymes, which is his AST and his ALT, are in the 50s. Normal, again, should be in the 20s. So what's his diagnosis? So Henry has insulin resistance or prediabetes with fatty liver. So insulin resistance is when your body cells ignore insulin. And what causes this? Well, most of the time it's due to visceral fat, which is the fat surrounding your organs. So as this, and this diagram shows how this happens. So let's say you're hungry and you grab a large bowl of standard cereal. By the way, most cereals are processed carbs, high in sugar. So then your pancreas is gonna have to produce a large surge of insulin to handle the rise in your blood sugar. Now the problem is if you carry visceral fat, your cells are gonna ignore the insulin. So then your pancreas has to make even more insulin. The problem is insulin makes you even more hungry and insulin is inflammatory on the body. It also accelerates aging. Now insulin resistance ties in with leptin resistance as well. And leptin resi resistance means no breaks on your hunger. So often we pick up on insulin resistance far before someone is diagnosed with prediabetes. So far before their fasting blood sugar goes over 100. So I always check fasting insulin in my patients. And I'm finding that insulin resistance, prediabetes is an extremely common problem these days. So how do we treat insulin resistance? So I put Henry on a clean paleo diet. So the first step is to avoid all the refined sugar and the processed carbs. Then we encourage him to eat more vegetables to minimize his grain intake because grains such as pastas and breads and cereals, they just cause insulin to spike and really contribute to his cycle of hunger. Then I encourage him to exercise. So 30 to 45 minutes of cardiovascular exercise daily and even brisk walking counts. Then I give him extra fiber, so either psyllium or acacia fiber, because fiber stabilizes blood sugar. It keeps you full and it's good for your gut microbiome. I give him a high dose B complex vitamin because B vitamins are great for reducing sugar and carb cravings so that he can make better choices about his food. Then I give him berberine. So berberine comes from a plant with bright red berries. And in supplement form, the capsules are bright yellow. So berberine just is very anti-inflammatory and it activates the tissues to become more responsive to insulin. Berberine actually works very similar to a common diabetes drug known as metformin. There was actually a research study that, was, that compared berberine one gram to metformin 1500 milligrams and they were found to be equally effective at lowering blood sugar and hemoglobin A1C. So I typically prefer berberine because it's anti-inflammatory and it also improves the cholesterol profile and it's very well tolerated. 
I also use pharmaceutical strength cinnamon and chromium because that also helps with insulin recognition in the body. So getting back to the case example, so after three months, Henry comes back to see me and he has lost 10 pounds. His hunger is now controlled. He's making better choices about his food. He feels healthier, more energy, and better mood. And we also repeat his blood work and we see significant improvement in his insulin, glucose, and liver enzymes. And then we typically continue to monitor Henry. So I like to monitor these types of patients and do blood work every three months to track their progress and to continue to encourage them on a healthy lifestyle. So are hormones making you fat? So this is a very common question that I get asked by patients. You know, being overweight can really be a multifactorial problem from so many different hormone imbalances. You know, maybe your thyroid is a little sluggish. Maybe your cortisol is high from stress. Maybe you're not metabolizing or clearing your estrogens very well. Maybe there's a little insulin resistance or leptin resistance. So we really have to look at all of these factors. <laughs> Thank you.